but today we're going to explore what makes blockchain security so interesting and so difficult to achieve. There are bugs in these systems and today we're talking about how to find some of them. We go through three steps usually. Fuzzing is really where it's at. Hi, I'm Carsten from Hacking Matters, where each week we discuss challenges in cybersecurity. Today we talk about blockchain security, a topic often talked about but relatively little understood compared to web application security, mobile application security, and in fact it is very different from these. So today we're going to explore what makes blockchain security so interesting and so difficult to achieve. There are three generations of blockchain systems and we'll be focused on the last one because that's technologically most interesting. The first generation is Bitcoin, a fit-for-purpose technology to move coins from one wallet to another wallet. Can't really do much beyond that. It's considered secure partly because of its simplicity and no need to talk about much. The second generation are smart contracts on blockchains. Ethereum being the predominant technology, but of course there's others where you have a system like Bitcoin that spans the globe, but is extensible by people putting their smart contracts to run on other people's computers. A very novel approach back when it was introduced and the opportunity to go beyond just moving coins from one place to another, opening all kinds of algorithmic opportunities. It turns out that Ethereum is almost too flexible for its own good because everyone wants to run all kinds of different smart contracts on Ethereum and so the number of transactions is overwhelming the Ethereum system. So for about the last seven years, people have been working on the third generation of blockchains, which are more fit for purpose blockchains again, but flexible in what they can do. So instead of putting your smart contract onto Ethereum, you would create an entire blockchain system just for your application. And then many of those would coexist and they could be interlinked in interesting ways to allow for the technology to be used more versatile and still very scalable. That's the most interesting generation of blockchain systems for hackers because there's so much code out there and so many different teams working on custom applications that of course there are bugs in these systems and today we're talking about how to find some of them. Generally we want to distinguish two types of bugs that are highly critical to blockchain system. One is where you can divert the control flow, basically making the application do something it wasn't supposed to do. That's the same as with web applications or mobile applications. If you can trip up the application, usually you can exploit it in some interesting ways. The second area is much more relevant for blockchain systems, and that is when you can degrade the system by crashing some nodes, by slowing them down, denial of service attacks. We know those from web applications, but they don't usually get you very rich. In a blockchain world, if you can degrade the system, you can make money by short selling the related coin. So any denial of service vector becomes a cash out opportunity. And blockchain systems are not immune to those issues, but they become a lot more pronounced in blockchain systems compared to, for example, web apps. Let's go through a couple of examples of the logic bugs and the denial of service, actual bugs that we have found in live blockchain systems. The first bug has to do with verified identities. On a blockchain, everyone is just a number, but if you want to create a little bit more credibility, like a check mark in a social media app pretty much, you can ask somebody with high reputation to validate you, often through offline means. And the way this works then is that you went through this validation, you put a message onto the blockchain that says, please validate me, and the person with higher reputation sends a message just after saying, yes, confirmed, that person is validated. And your original message includes all the context that you want validated, be it your name and address, some pseudonym. Now here's where it gets tricky in a distributed system like a blockchain. It's not guaranteed that messages are necessarily processed in the same order that they were created in world time. So the blockchain, each block has some messages in it, and it could be that some messages slip to the next block. They were actually earlier than messages in that block. So the bug here is you send the correct information and the validator says, yep, that's correct, I validate that. But then you sneak in a message with wrong information and make the blockchain put it before the validation. So of those three messages now, the first two on the blockchain are from you, and the third message says, 
What he just said is correct. The wrong information is now validated. You can reorder messages on blockchains, for instance, by tipping. If you provide a larger tip, your message gets priority treatment. A simple bug, but perhaps difficult to spot as you're designing the system. So watch out for these type of logic bugs that are triggered by the distributed nature of the chain. The next bug is from the second category, slowing down a blockchain or even crashing nodes. In this bug, the hacker uses the pseudo function, a function we know from Linux to basically gain super user privileges. They use the same name on some blockchain systems and basically nobody is really allowed to call this except for the governance of the chain that really changes the parameters of the chain. So in order for pseudo to be triggered, you go through all kinds of voting algorithms. Um, it's supposed to be a very secure system and that's not what we're trying to hack here. By calling the blockchain, you make the system go through certain checks. And in the particular example I'm thinking of, one of these checks is invoked twice. Now, if you call the pseudo function on itself, that check is already executed four times. If you call it on itself twice, it's executed eight times. And you see how if you string together just a small number, say 20 pseudo commands, that would completely break the chain because the computation will never finish. That's not to say that the hacker can execute a pseudo command, but by chaining 20 pseudo commands, even to check whether or not you are allowed to execute it stops the system. A bug like this, of course, can be fixed through a code update, but it takes some time for the code to be distributed to all the nodes. And until then, this blockchain looks less stable, less appealing perhaps to the blockchain markets. So there's a good chance that the value of the coin goes down, and so the hacker just made some money. I'll give you one last bug to illustrate how interesting bug hunting is in blockchain system, because we don't really encounter the same problems in other IT systems. This one has to do with blockchain storage. Mostly the blockchain is there to compute code on other people's computers, but of course, sometimes you also want to store something in a blockchain. Blockchain storage is very expensive compared to the storage in your computer because it's so redundant. It's basically copied to every single participant in the network and it's perpetual. The data never goes away. A single gigabyte of data on the Ethereum system costs in the tens of millions of dollars. So if you now found a way of putting data onto the blockchain, maybe even garbage data, you could heavily degrade the reputation of that system because all of a sudden people have to store your garbage data forever, really spoiling the reputation of that blockchain, not just now, but also making it relatively difficult to recover from this. If the, the blockchain is considered full, what are you going to delete to recover from it? How do you distinguish that spoofed hacker data from real data? It gets really, really tricky um, very quickly. So these kinds of bugs where you do leak data onto the blockchain without paying much for it, those I consider the most tricky bugs and we do encounter them regularly. These were three types of bugs from a much larger range of bugs you find in blockchain systems. The main point is bugs that we would also find in other types of IT systems are much more critical in blockchain systems because of their distributed, perpetual nature, because the value of the chain is so dependent on its reputation and it's so easy to damage the reputation with denial of service attacks. How can you start finding blockchain bugs? Well, we go through three steps usually. We do some static analysis, which is actually the job of the blockchain developer. But in our security assessments, of course, we double check. There's good tools for this in pretty much any third generation blockchain system. So just use the tools that the developers should have used to double check. Secondly, fuzzing. We'll talk about this more in a moment. And then third, manual analysis, basically source code auditing. But that middle part, fuzzing, is really where it's at. There's good fuzzing tools for, for most blockchain systems now. My team, for instance, develops a suite of fuzzers for the Polkadot blockchain system. It includes fuzzers for the actual runtime, for its smart contract language, some harnesses to make this very easy to use. And the same would be true in other blockchain systems, not necessarily to the same level of development. By the way, our fuzzers are all open source, so go check them out on GitHub. You will find fuzzers for pretty much any blockchain system and yeah, run with those. Most blockchain code is developed open source these days. So you can basically start playing around with it right away. Try to find bugs, 
we find an average of one to two critical bugs in each blockchain system the first time we audit it. That's an average, could be a lot more, and there's some that don't have any bugs, but it definitely is a bug-rich environment thanks to the speed of innovation in blockchain. There's so many new projects all the time. So hopefully that inspired you to research blockchain security a little bit more and to deal with this very fascinating technology that I should remark is fascinating no matter whether you believe that it will change the world. As a technology and in terms of the bugs that it has, it just provides interesting puzzles to somebody who might perhaps be tired of testing web apps or mobile apps. If you do, we'd be honored if you use our fuzzles, of course. Any questions, let us know in the comments. And if you get any use out of this, show it with a like and subscribe. Thank you and happy hacking.